we're going to be looking at um, solving some more advanced type uh, equations involving uh, exponential functions. Um, and it's only an advanced in that uh, there are uh, a couple of twists that aren't typical that you see just using, for example, just the, uh, the log rules or the exponential rules. We have to go a little bit beyond that. But before we get into that, um, just a quick note that we can solve any equation um, where you have a, a function on either side of the equal sign simply by graphing um, y1 as one side of the equation and y2 as the other side of the equation. All right, so here's y1, which is the left side of the equation. Uh, here's y2, which is the right side of the equation. And where those two graphs intersect are the solutions for x. And you can just type this into your calculator, hit intersect, and you can find these points. So it doesn't matter. I can give you any sort of crazy equation, and you can do this. And then with Wolfram Alpha, for example, you could, you don't even have to go through all that. You can just type this equation in as it is, and it'll do all that work for you. So that's a trick that you can always use to solve any equation that I give you. So you can actually have a, have a picture of what it looks like have sort of an estimation of where the answers are, not even an estimation, you can know, find exactly what the answers are. So um, I don't want to get into uh, any philosophy of like, well, then why are we going through uh, and learning all the uh, process of how to do this algebraically? Um, I guess the bottom line is that, um, you know, the pursuit of mathematics is not calculation. We don't really do this just to find answers. So if all we wanted is an answer, then yes, then we, we just do this. What we're, what we're doing essentially is that we're, we're using these problems as an excuse to use our logic. And it's nice to use this in, in a format with mathematics because we can then check to see if our logical deductions are correct. So um, anyway, let's get into it. Here is a portion of the um, assignment, not assignment, the exercise set um, out of our textbook, Hayes and Harris, uh, in chapter 19b. And, and it asks us to solve for x. And a lot of these, you know, you can just use the log rules or exponential rules, take the log of both sides and solve for x. All right. And so I won't go into those. There's another screencast that talks a little bit of more in depth about how to solve these more basic ones. What I want to do is I want to take a look at a, at a question like this, where it's not just a simple matter of applying the exponential or logarithm rules to find the, the solution. There's, an, there's another twist to it. So we're going to go ahead and explore that. All right. Well, before we get into that, let's take a pause and, um, and think about what are all the possible possibilities for solutions. And this is a a graph that has all the different sort of manipulations of e to the x, right? So here's regular e to the x, um, e to the negative x. Hopefully you can pick out which graph that one is. Um, we're taking the opposite of x. So if x was 3, now we're looking at uh, negative 3. So it's flipping uh, from 3 to negative 3 on the x, so we're, we're flipping over the y-axis. So here is um, g of x, or e to the negative x. Negative e to the x, Whatever our, whenever we put in a value for x, we get an answer here. Now we're going to take the opposite of that answer, so the negative. And so what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over the x-axis, so that's the graph of negative e to the x. And so by elimination, you can see that this is um, negative e to the negative x. And uh, all that is is taking this and then flipping it over the x-axis. So here are your basic groups. And the reason why I point this out is um, you might have a situation where you have uh, this and this, uh, an equation where you have e to the x and e to the negative x. And so what I want you to do is I want you to sort of recognize that if you have that situation, you're going to basically have one solution, one place where those two uh, cross each other. If, you, if I gave you an equation where we have uh, 
e to the x and some sort of like maybe negative 2e to the uh, x or something like that, do you see that these two equations, um, this graph and this graph, they never touch each other. So that would be no solution. And then finally, if I have this graph and this curved graph, okay, and if I were to translate this down, this, this curved graph downwards, we should be able to see that it's going to intersect at two points. So just like with quadratics, uh, depending on what mixture of these we get, we can get uh, no solutions, one solution, or two solutions. Okay, so um, maybe start getting, uh, you know, clever with taking a look at the question that they present to you just to sort of estimate what kind of solution you might get. All right, so this is number 3H out of, out of that problem set. And we're going to go ahead and walk our way through it. And, and, um, and so what I've done here is I started uh, taking, oh, I tried to put the, the x variables on the same side of the equation. Um, I know that natural log undoes an exponential function. So I took that to both sides. It kind of looked promising because then this, this simplifies to 0. But then then I get this expression. And we might be tempted to break this into two smaller natural logs, like the natural log of e to the x minus the natural log of this. But we can't. This is not, this is not a parentheses uh, where we're multiplying natural log and we can just distribute it. Um, this is one expression that we have to take the natural log of. And we don't have any rules where the, um, the argument here uh, is separated separated by a minus sign. Now, if this was this over this, then we can separate it into two smaller um, natural logs. Uh, you know, two natural logs minus each other. But but as it turns out, it, as promise, it looks like we should be able to do something here. And after thinking for a while, you might figure out that we're this is actually a dead end. There there isn't much that we can do here that's productive. So, um, so this is where our uh, use of the log rules and exponential rules breaks down because we don't have a tool to really solve this. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go back and think back to, um, to last year and, and employ the idea that, well, we'll oh, you'll see. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll, we'll go ahead and tack this problem again. We're going to move the uh, the variables on both side on the same side of the equation, and then maybe maybe I can employ an exponential rule where where now I can put this in the denominator. This makes it maybe a little easier to see that that we're really going to have issues trying to get um, x by itself. So. I don't like this exponent here down in the denominator. I don't like having this fraction. So what I think I might do is I might multiply everything by e to the x. Right? If I multiply this by e to the x, this fraction disappears. This becomes e to the 2x. And then on the left side of the equation, I get e to the x. Now, this looks a little bit more promising. Now, we could pursue. Um, previously, like we can move this e to the x to the right side, we can move this negative 12 to the left side, and that way we have the variables on both sides. But then we would get something, uh, we would get stuck again. Uh, we would be tempted to take the natural log of both sides. Uh, we could try to factor something out, um, but then it doesn't equal zero. Um, there's a lot of algebra we could do here that, that looks promising, but um, doesn't, doesn't work well. Um, so I'm going to show you a technique that something that we can do um, that's new. What we're going to do is I'm going to move everything over to the right side. And as soon as you see this, hopefully you have some sort of um, um, message in your head that says this looks familiar. All right, I've you know the, I've seen this structure before. I've got a I got an exponent of two here. I've got a trinomial equal to zero. And the, the real breakthrough that you're going to have to make is you have to realize that I can write this term like this. 
and if you think about your exponential rules, um, we know that um, that uh, if we have this to the power of two, it's the same thing as just multiplying these two exponents, right? So, um, so I'm going to think of I'm going to actually think of this term in this way, and so I'm going to rewrite it. Now this looks a little bit more familiar. I've got something squared minus that same something minus twelve. So if I if I sort of factor this where, you know, if I pretend like this is an x and not e to the x, so I've got x squared minus x minus 12, I know that I can factor that. But instead of x, we're just going to make it e to the x. All right, so um, now we can do a quick mental check to see that this is correct. I know that e to the x times e to the x is, well, e to the x squared, e to the x times 3, uh, 3 e to the x minus 4 e to the x is minus 1 e to the x, and then I've got negative 12 here. So actually it checks out. So by doing this factoring, we make a huge breakthrough, because now we can take a look at these individual pieces. I know that either this has to equal 0, or this has to equal 0, or both. And so that's what I'll do. I'll set them equal to 0 and start solving. And... Um, and then I realize that this simplifies to um, x equals natural log of 4. What happens to this side? Well, we know that e to the x can never be negative. So there's no value for x that would make this expression equal to negative 3. So this actually is a false solution. It actually doesn't work out. So the, our only answer is x is equal to the natural log of 4. So we've done it with this little breakthrough. Now, if we look at this graphically, um, again, using, using our graphing calculator, typing that in for y1, typing this in for y2, we can see that the two graphs only cross at one point. And so we shouldn't be surprised that there was only one solution. So if I go over to natural log of 4 and go up, then I, here's our point of intersection. Now, it didn't say to find the point of intersection. It said solve for x. And that's the difference between this problem and this problem. I'm going to look at uh, this section. Over here, solve for x. Over here, find the points of intersection. That means find x and y. Okay. Now, that's the only twist. The rest of these problems work exactly like these problems up above. You're going to have to make this equal to this and solve. So let's try a problem. This one is not out of your textbook. I went ahead and invented this problem so that you can use it as an example to try the other ones to sort of solidify, because there's only three problems there to, to practice. So to create a little bit more practice, I created this problem. So find the points of intersection of the, these two graphs. Of course, you can graph these and see where they intersect. But we're going to go right into the algebra. Um, in order to find where they intersect, I have to find where they're equal to each other. All right, so I set them equal to each other. And then um, I start rearranging. I move the very, I'm going to move everything over to one side of the equal sign. Um, this is not in a form that we can factor. I don't have a, a squared term here or anything. So actually, as tempting as this looks, um, this, is, this is actually no good to us. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply through both sides by e to the x, and then I get something like this, right? So um, that equals 0. Now, when I distribute e to the x, so that the e to the x and the e to the negative x uh, equal 1. So 3 times 1 just gives you 3. That's going to give you e to the 2x, and then that's going to give you this. Okay, so now we're going to rearrange it so that it looks a little bit more like a structure that we're familiar with with the 2x, let's remember that we can rewrite this or think of it in this way. So what we'll do is we'll think of it as e to the x as just a regular x, right? x squared minus 4x plus 3. And you can factor that out and then substitute out instead of x. It wasn't really x. It was e to the x. Go ahead and put that in. Go ahead and check that you got that right, all right? Multiply it back through and make sure that you get this. What in the world just happened? Um, okay, 
And then now that we can use the, the null factor law, all right, we can make this equal to zero, we can make this equal to zero and solve. And now we actually get two solutions, right? Because um, both of these are positive numbers in the end. So we get x equals natural log of four or zero. Now we might be tempted to stop here and say, voila, we've found it, I've worked hard, this should be the end, but it's not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and find the values for y. So um, we found that these were our x values. So what we have to do is select either one of these equations um, to substitute these values for x in to figure out what the y is. So we went ahead and did that with um, natural log of four. I just picked this equation. I substituted in e and the natural log cancel each other out. So I just turned that into negative four. Okay, and simplify. And then over here, same thing, we get zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and substitute zero in there. That makes negative one. And so here are our two points of intersection. All right, and if we look at this graphically, we can see why there's two points, all right? They cross here and here. Okay, hopefully that gives you a, a much more solid foundation on how to do these problems. Good luck.